So to everyone who watches on our live streaming, welcome. Turn with me to the epistle of Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 9 through 11. The ushers will be coming with the sermon handouts. Shall we look to God's word? There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest as himself also ceased from his work, as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall, according to the same example of disobedience. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, I commit myself. Lord, let me step aside and let your spirit take charge of my heart, my mind, my eyes. Every faculty of me be taken over, Lord. I'm just a vessel, Lord. Help me to speak your word with clarity, with unction, with anointing. Lord, whatever you want, speak to us, Lord. Holy Spirit, only what you want be spoken, Lord. I pray for all your beloved children, Lord, the church of God, and those who are watching live streaming. In the name of Jesus, speak to them. Touch their hearts. Transform, encourage them, build them. In your most precious name. Your presence be real and tangible in this place. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today, this morning, uh, I want to speak to you about believers' rest in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we look into the book of Hebrews, it's one of the, the most special books and has a special place in the library of the Bible. The understanding is the authorship is anonymous, but however, as I studied the word and as I've seen, there are a lot of internal evidences that prove the rich text and the way in which, as Paul writes in, in his other letters, he's a very astute, I'm seeing a kind of a feedback coming back. Okay, thanks. Uh, so he's a very astute lawyer. He, he has a way of proving, proving things, and uh, you can see that all across the book of Hebrews. And also there are a couple of strong internal evidences, one where... Paul says Timothy will be coming, and then Peter in his epistle says, uh, our brother Paul wrote a letter to you, and that was very specifically mentioning to the Jewish Christians. This letter is written to the Jewish Christians who were, for the f first time, you know, found this newfound faith, and the Jewish uh, believers were the first converts or the first Christians, and uh, it so happened that they were going through some kind of test of faith in their life, and uh, they needed some answer, and Paul was giving some strong answers of, uh, for their faith, because uh, when we walk this journey of faith, enemy is so deceiving. He can deceive us, and uh, he can trip us, and uh, we can see things in the natural and we be fooled, because this Christian walk has to be lived by faith, not by sight. And many a times we are challenged as we see these things that happen. The, the main theme of this subject is the supremacy of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's better than the angels, he's better than the covenants, he's better than the, ta he's better than the tabernacle, he's be better than Moses, he's better than the, high, uh, the priesthood. And then it talks about faith and endurance, the great faith chapter. The first time my eye caught about the Hebrew, uh, the book of Hebrews was around uh, four years old, maybe 39 years back, uh, as I saw these interesting uh, words by faith, 
by faith and uh, I always uh, love that chapter a lot. So this morning what I would like to talk to you is about believers rest in the Lord Jesus Christ's finished work. We see the first mention of the word rest in the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 3 it see, say, says like this that God rested from everything on the seventh day. You know if you study the book of Hebrews you, do, you see something very interesting is it is a pinnacle of the Bible interpretation especially the principle of first mention. The principle of first mention is what when a thought in the Bible is mentioned for the first time it's carried across to the pages of the Bible in such a manner and it has an ultimate uh, ultimate fulfillment or a culmination and we see in the book of Hebrews that the ultimate culmination is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus on the road to Emmaus he said to those disciples that the laws and the prophets and the and the Psalms talk about me. Therefore this Bible is Christocentric which means everything points to Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and everything was made by that word and that word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his, beheld his glory full of grace and truth and we are here to lift up uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today this gathering means a sense only because of the cross, because of the Calvary. When I'm standing behind this pulpit and preaching the word of God, it doesn't make any sense if it is not about Calvary because when Paul writes to Corinthians, this is how he says, if Jesus did not raise from the dead, our preaching is vain we are found liars and those who died they died in our sins and if we had hope in this life we are the most miserable people but thanks be to God that Jesus has risen from the dead so therefore our hope is resting in Lord Jesus Christ when God gave this command to the children of Israel you see over there one thing that he especially commanded about the Sabbath rest see it's a see but when we when you go through the pages of the Bible as we come into the New Testament Jesus is bringing a radical change he says that he's over the Lord over the Sabbath it is not about the day it is about the internal it is about the heart God is looking at the heart man is looking at the outside that is why Jeremiah says, heart is deceitful and it is beyond the cure. You know, our hearts need to be touched. As, as we think, so we are in this world. So there is a rest for the believer. And why there, is a, why there is a need for rest is because we are living in a fallen world and this is, uh, this is filled with curse, this is filled with curse and sin and everything. But in the middle of this, we know that there is hope in Lord Jesus Christ. That rest comes from Lord Jesus Christ. We see in creation that Jesus, uh, that God created by the word of his mouth. He originates everything by the word See, everything comes from the word. Therefore, we have to be careful about the words that we speak. You know, we have to be careful that we, we, are, we use our words very carefully. That's why Jesus said, you know, by every word we speak, we shall be judged. And that's why James alludes to that in another way that the one who bridles his tongue is, is a kind of a perfect man. Brothers and sisters, this morning time, what I believe is there is a rest for you. You don't have to remain in a place of fear. You don't have to remain in a place of depression. Satan is a liar and he deceives you time and time again with what you see on the natural. Because the natural man is not able to understand the things of God. But the spiritual man understands everything and he's, he discerns everything but he's not discerned by anybody for we have the mind of Christ. So God created everything by the word of his mouth. He originated by speaking the word. He said, let there be. And everything is based on this word. This word is powerful. So, but after he created, there was fall. Man, man disobeyed. And because of the disobedience of man, 
there was curse that came upon this the bible says this is how it says you shall eat or not, not you shall not eat of it cursed is the ground for your sake and in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life both thorns and thistles shall bring forth and you shall eat herb of the field in the sweat of your face shall you eat bread and t- till your you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for the for out of the dust you shall return here i want to make a mention that that after the fall this uh, this world had been cursed but in jesus christ there is hope jesus christ the second adam brought the restoration but so there is a work in the creation then there is a confusion there is a chaos but then in jesus christ everything is restored paul when he writes to the ephesians he says that he broke the middle wall of partition and he made an access I want to tell you something this morning time that let us not familiarize the gospel. Gospel has to be over and over preached in the church then outside because many a times we, we, we are so enamored by the gospel to a point that we don't even know the power. See, God honors when we are serious about what he speaks. See, God is very intentional with every word he speaks. Don't gloss over and pass it by. He means what he says and I have personally experienced in my life and I'm sure many of you have experienced when you hold on to his word he is faithful to fulfill it time after time after time again and that is the greatness of our God we serve so there is a rest because in the cross sin was punished you know we, we should not take it so lightly you know in this last two weeks two great uh, uh, political leaders of India passed away you know, the, the, the world was talking great about them. But my heart was grieving that the moment their, their breath went, they slipped into eternal hell. We many times take these things so lightly. The real and the best thing in this life is to know Jesus, I'm telling you. Oh, I praise God for the parents who knew Jesus and who taught Bible in our homes, who made sure we prayed. I thank the Lord. The greatest asset in my life is Lord Jesus Christ, which was handed down through my parents who were so strict and strong about, about what God's word was. And they made sure we went to church every Sunday. Or they made sure that they poured water on our eyes if we did not wake up in the morning. Yeah, I'm serious. I did not feel like going to church, I'm telling you. That was the last thing. Sunday, all the weakness used to come on Sunday. All the headache and sickness and fever. Hallelujah. I did not have any lame excuses with my father and mother. My father made made it a point in our home. Every night when he came home, I have two other brothers, that there was prayer in the house. If we did not have family prayer, he used to get us out of the bed. He told my mom, don't give them food if they don't pray. I thank the Lord for corrections in our lives. We always talk about blessings. I thank the Lord for the corrections because the Bible says, my father used to say this scripture, oh, the rebuke of the righteous is like an oil of anointing. Praise God. Never feel hurt when you are rebuked or corrected because that is for your blessing. So, in Jesus Christ, sin is punished and the payment of penalty is paid and there is an eternal hope. You shall be with God forever. You know, you look on the other side, there is a lake of fire. But the fire is never quenching. Hallelujah. We give value to all the things of this world. But many times we miss it. It is the spirit inside that is valuable. Moment that the spirit separates from the heart, from the, bo- from the body, this is nothing but corpse. All, uh, all the value that is, is because of this life inside. And all the value that we are is because of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of Jesus Christ. And I have to also say, I am what I am because of Lord Jesus Christ. So there is a rest for the people of God. What is this rest? This rest is total reliance on the finished work of the cross. A cross is like the ark. 
And in that ark, everything is there. You are looking for this life and life to come. Jesus has the answer to every problems of your life. Hallelujah. You know, the answer to this world will come from this room, not from White House. If you will believe and if you start praying, the world will be shaken. You know, we had some earth shakers and movers in the book of Acts. And Acts has not ended. The Holy Spirit and his work, his work is still eminent and still going on strong. 2,000 years and the business, the enterprise of Jesus has not shut down. It's getting stronger and stronger. And we see, oh, one more church in Penn Hills being planted because what Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you shall bind on this earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose on this earth shall be loosed in heaven. See, that's the kind of power we carry. And many times we act like, oh, like Elijah on the juniper tree. Lord. That Lord, oh, I'm running after, oh, my life. You know what? Nothing will befall you. Nobody will touch you. No evil will come. That is his promise. This is firmer than everything you see on the outside. This might look flimsy many times because... Because it is a it, it looks like a letter no these are not letters and sentences these are life and spirit that's what Jesus said in John chapter 6 so never take God's word lightly because it is the total reliance on the finished work of Jesus Christ he has answers for your marriage problem he has answers for the sickness and today this morning I'm believing with all confidence with the church I want to tell you that I am believing that God is going to supernatural thing in our own family oh I am not looking at the report of what the doctors have to say I said to the report you are under my feet hallelujah it's not easy to walk when you are having challenges in your home but I know with Christ in my vessel I can smile at the storm hallelujah what good it is for me to preach this gospel if I don't believe in what it says Lord I said Lord I don't get everything but I will believe what your word says I will I will do whatever you tell me Lord because you are all that means to me in this life hallelujah Jesus becomes a revelation he leads you to through a good brokenness a good brokenness brings a revelation and revelation brings authority so there is a total reliance on this work oh he has answers to all life's problems we are coward we are covered by everything. We get access to God. It's not an ordinary thing. See, the moment you open your mouth, you're entering into the holy realms. Worship is very serious. Never take it casually. Because God is watching everything. It's a very serious. The more I know him, the more I feel trembling in his presence. Because worship is not just here in the church. Worship is also when I'm outside. When no one is watching me. When no one is looking, me, looking at me. Not even my own dear ones are looking. Where is my heart? You know what? When you fear God, he gives you the secret keys of life. See, rest is not slothfulness. Rest is trust. Do what you're supposed to do. But know that God will pour his grace over it. Hallelujah. Do whatever you have to do. In the morning sow your seeds. Don't withhold your hand. This or that. Both may prosper. Cast your bread upon the waters. It shall come after many days. God is faithful to his word. God will keep his word. So I am resting in him. I am not figuring out he up here. Christianity is not intellectualism. It is complete reliance here down in the heart on the work of Lord Jesus Christ. Resting is doing what he says. Jesus, uh, the Mary said to, the, to the, those servants, do what he tells. See, there is power in the words that Jesus speaks. Pour the water. Water will turn into wine. Master, we have been fishing for almost all night. 
Oh, Jesus now said, cast your net into the deep. Peter did not answer back and say, Oh, Jesus, you don't know. Oh, we have been in fishing business through our grandparents and even through, through generations we have been doing that. And this is that season of that year when fishes won't come. Hallelujah. This is how I would say that the creation blushed. Even the fishes will hear his voice. Every creation, when Jesus spoke, cast your net into the depth, immediately even the animate and the inanimate will start responding. Hallelujah, there is power in this word. Nothing will shake you or break you. Never live in depression. If God is on my side, who can be against me? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, said to Joshua, no man shall be able to stand against you. That was uh, before Jesus died. But in New Testament, Paul, in an ecstatic exclamation, says, God is on my side. Hallelujah. So I rest every day in the trust that Jesus will put his grace over everything I am endeavoring in this life. Hallelujah. Oh, Christians don't live depressed because the depression is for the world you don't worry like the heathens God once lamb blasted me and once I was worrying about a certain situation and the Lord said you are like a heathen because the Bible says in Matthew 7 why do you worry are you not more precious than the, the flower the birds of the air and the flower and the and the lilies of the field are you not more valuable hallelujah Oh, the reason is we have been filled with so much of the world and that many times dominates and navigates the way we live our life. Rest is living in the faithfulness of God. Rest is waiting on God. Rest is persevering in the times of test and trials. Every time I saw those passages, I like to preach, but it becomes preaching becomes something different. When you have to live through it. Hallelujah. Oh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. I am not reading the Bible like a grammar or like a storybook. No, I am believing every dot and a tittle of this word real in my life and in your life. Greater is the in-living Christ in me than the circumstance I am facing. Hallelujah. Oh, look to the mountain and speak how great your God is. It is not by might, it is not by power this mountain shall be moved. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord is faithful. I tried to always figure it out here, up here, because I studied so much of this world, and the Lord had to dismantle it. That's why Paul says, casting down all imaginations and everything that exhausts itself and bringing it to the obedience of Jesus Christ. This morning I'm speaking to somebody. You've got to bring those thoughts, those ways of thinking, like a prisoner, and put them handcuffed and say, I am going to believe what God says. Hallelujah. See, what is the uniqueness of this rest? This uniqueness of this rest is hinging on the gospel. Hallelujah. This gospel, the, the, the main, the, what, what happened in the gospel is about the person of Lord Jesus Christ. It is about his life, death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus is the ultimate answer because we had no way to be in fellowship with the Lord. We were condemned for eternal, eternal hell. And Jesus brought us. Some of us, our stories are amazing. I tell you in this morning time, oh, we have nothing but to thank the Lord Jesus. Thank Thank you for your cross. Let the cross and his work be always before you. May you see that every day of your life and may you find hope and comfort in those trying hours that Jesus knows it all. That's why that song says Jesus now more than ever. We need him more than ever. Jesus is all that we need. Jesus is all. This is all that we speak and preach because we have nothing to say to this world other than about our Savior. 
This gospel destroyed the works of the devil. The Bible says that he dismantled, he made a public shame in Colossians. This is how it says that he stripped him. He made the enemy naked. He put handcuffs on him and dragged him on a triumphal procession. Therefore, you are victorious. We are not trying towards victory. We are participating in a victory already, already our Savior won. That's why Paul says we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Hallelujah. This gospel is powerful. So I am resting in the gospel because it is the power of God. This is more powerful than nuclear bomb. Hallelujah. It changes nations. It changes cities and villages. Back in India, the, our, our government is planning to bring an anti corruption bill. And the Lord spoke to me, son, rest in peace. Don't you know my word where it says nations are like a drop in the bucket and judges are nothing but a vanity? And I have the waters in the hollow of my hands. What are these mere mortal men that will try to fight my plan? Oh, hallelujah. Who can stand against the Lord? The counsel of the wicked will be brought to nothing. I am in rest and peace. No matter what comes, I know the Lord has the final say. He will drive the final nail into the coffin of the enemy. Hallelujah. Oh, this message of this cross looks foolishness to the world. But I want to tell you something special. When this world could not understand the work of God through, the, through his wisdom, oh, and could not, could, could not understand the, 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 the work of God and his wisdom through the wisdom of this world, God chose the foolish things of this world to abase the wise. Many of you were, were not of noble birth and our backgrounds were not so great. But he took all oh, the hopeless, but he took the ones from, from the dust and from the, from the ashes and made them sit with the princess. Hallelujah. That is the power of the gospel. Oh, it not only changes your heart, it changes your circumstances, it changes everything around you. Oh, hallelujah. That is the power. That's what we want to give to this world. Silver and gold have I learned, but such as I have given thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, as, he, as Peter said to the man at the beautiful gate. I'm resting on the gospel's truth. Then I'm resting in the word of God. It says, for the word of God is living, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Oh my goodness, we recently bought some, some back box of knives from Walmart. And we have put a tape on it and kept it up in our shelf because we don't want our kids to even come close to it. These are pretty sharp knives. If the Bible says these knives that we use are in no comparison to the knife, or oh, the word of God is, oh my goodness. That's why God said to Joshua, meditate on God's word. There is power that comes out. Not only it is powerful and alive, there is life flowing, brother, sister. Oh, that's why when, you, when somebody is going through trouble, we cannot fix it. Give them the word. Word will do the job. You know why? The gospel, the word is like an uncaged lion when it is proclaimed. It's, it will devour its praise. Who can stand against the Lord? Oh, it is versatile and it's of highest value because the Bible says you have lifted your word above your name, which means the word and his name are synonymous. And then it gives direction to my life. If you don't have direction, oh, your word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. It will take you where you want to go. This word will never fail in your life. My word which comes out of my mouth, Isaiah 55 verse 11, shall not return void. It will accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent. 
Hallelujah. Believe it, brothers and sisters. God, it is, see, this is not resting on my shoulder or your shoulder. It is resting on him. You and I, your servants, do whatever he tells. Rest he will take care. Water will turn into wine. 5,000 will be fed. Blind eyes will open. Lame will walk. Churches will be planted. You do whatever you can for the sake. Your family will come to the Lord. Hallelujah. This word is powerful <laughs> and the Lord watches over to perform his word in Jeremiah verse 1 verse 1 verse 12 it says like soldiers are garrisoning around God is garrisoning around his word he makes sure not one will fall down that's why God's word is infallible so I am resting in the word of God not only I'm resting in the gospel and in the word of God I am resting in this fact that nothing is hidden from him or oh, in Hebrews verse 14 it says 414 it says no creation is hidden from him which means if the enemy has plotted something against you it will come to the surface he searches everything you can be assured nothing is hidden spirit will bring it hallelujah lord is faithful to his word he will bring it to pass he is faithful to bring his word and I'm resting in that word each day. My trust is in that, that he will, nothing will fail, nothing will befall me. No evil will come into my life without his knowing he is faithful. He searches the deep things of God. Spirit searches the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Not only I'm resting in the fact that God knows everything, I'm also knowing in the fact that Jesus knows everything I go through because he has been tempted to all points. There is nothing that is new that he does not know. Does not Jesus know about this situation? Oh yeah, Jesus knows about it. He knows even before you were born, even before you were conceived in your mother's womb, even before you became a thought in your parents' heart. Jesus knows you and Jesus knows everything you are confronted with hallelujah and Jesus wants you to be brought to his very image you know what is the ultimate purpose of a child of God to be in the image of Lord Jesus Christ that's why Paul says I'm groaning and travailing so that Christ may be formed in you oh this morning time our desire should be Jesus oh our our, our love should be Jesus we should be always looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross despising the shame hallelujah not, I, not only I'm resting in the fact that Jesus knows it all, but also he gives me access into his presence. Now let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. You are very much in the holy of the holies. Though you may be sitting on an orange pew, I want to remind you, your spirit is right now connected with the very presence of God. Oh, by the blood of Jesus Christ, you get entrance into his very presence. You know, when I, this is what the Lord taught me. When you open your mouth and pray, you're not standing here physically yes your body is physically but your spirit man is in the parliament of god you're standing there when you open your mouth see with that understanding. don't pray prayers without understanding because there's no point that's why paul says i also pray with understanding which means this understanding of not this world but the spiritual revelation and understanding where I pray with this understanding, when I'm opening my mouth, when I'm worshiping, I am in the presence of the Lord. And I know heaven is hearing. That is why the Bible says, this is the confidence we have. What are we, are we ask in prayer, believing? We have our petitions. It is basically like your applications before an authority. Therefore, I am resting that I have a bold access into his presence. Only the high priest had in the, in, in the, in the, in the old, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the times of the law. But now in Jesus Christ, he has broken the middle wall of partition. Hallelujah. I'm hearing the word 13. Somebody who has served faithfully 13, maybe 13 years or working somewhere 13 years. God brings promotion in your life. A promotion is coming. Rest in that truth 
every open door in somebody's life there is a shut door the Lord says that door will open he has the keys of David he opens no man can shut if he shuts no man can open and the Lord opens that door for you there are some stubborn situations in your life and the Lord says he's going to turn it around if you will not grow weary in in this faith walk don't grow weary trust him don't give up on God cause he doesn't give up on you so rest in him Oh, rest in him and that is what the Lord wants to tell us this morning how can I rest in him by walking in faith complete obedience obedience is the key and faith is the bridge Holy Spirit is the transport that transports me into the presence of God have faith because that which is of faith not, not of faith is a sin you see in the in the story this this uh, this reference of this this chapter is from numbers 13 14 where the spies were sent but only two came with the good report you might be a minority in the group that's fine you don't have to believe the way the majority believes because God just needs only one dr. Billy Graham always said only one person is enough who is faithful hallelujah oh like from one stars sprang and like the sands of the of the sea Oh, sure. Be, oh, Lord, only I am only the one. That's fine. Oh, God, and you are an army. Hallelujah. Not only faith, I surrender and consecrate. I'm set apart to the Lord. It's no longer I that live. Christ that lives in me. I don't own my eyes. I don't own my hands. My heart doesn't belong to me. Every body part is his this is this is his temple so glorify God with this temple both so body soul spirit everything he owns it so when he owns it why should I worry why should I worry why should I be in tension he has it all the master the Lord has it all surrendered life another way in which I can enter into that intimacy into into that rest is intimacy intimate relationship Oh, like a relationship of a husband and a wife, a sacred relationship, oh, between us and the Lord, where we are communing, abide in me. How can I abide in him? By hearing his word and doing what he tells me. But there are dangers if we don't rest. See, one of the biggest reasons why there is... Uh, people are not able to enter his rest is because live in a world of unbelief but without faith it is impossible to please God the one who comes to God must believe that God is the rewarder of them who seek him diligently Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 another reason why people struggle in entering into his rest is traditions of men you're always expecting this is going to be the outcome no that is not how the outcome is wind lists wherever it wants to go to Holy Spirit will do whatever he wants to do let us not carry catcher a outcome let him do the outcome let him do an unprecedented, unexpected outcome in your life. The Lord, I'm hearing a word, the Lord is going to open shut wombs. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is opening your womb. I see that child is coming back. Hallelujah. I'm seeing that relationship being mended. Somebody needs to hear that word. And I'm also seeing somebody who was called into ministry and has not been in that in the way they would have desired the Lord is bringing you into ministry get ready hallelujah God is going to do some astounding things see when you trust the Lord you can enter into his rest the grace factor the God factor will complete your lack we are all lack we all lack we're all finite but connect with Jesus why worry Hallelujah! this morning time as the worship team is coming forward I want to pray over you 
an anointing of rest come upon you. Rest is not slothfulness. It's not slumber. Do whatever you are supposed to do. But don't put your stakes in that. Put your stake in Christ. He will. Yeah, I'm telling you, Jesus is a good businessman. He can, he can teach you business. Hallelujah. Jesus can teach us coding. Jesus knows science. Jesus knows everything. Because he's the alpha and the omega. He's the, he's the embodiment of all wisdom. Which this world brags about. It all comes from, from the Bible. All the great schools of America were Bible schools. Harvard, Yale and Stanford, they were all Bible schools. All education comes from the Bible. If anyone lacks wisdom, God is willing to give. Rest in him. Sickness, Jesus knows it. He's the great physician. He's the best surgeon. He was the first surgeon. He does surgeries without no sutures. And you will, you will know that cancer will be disintegrated in Jesus' name. Don't give too much importance to the doctor's report. You know, I have learned in my life, I don't even give importance to doctor's report. They want to break your will. They want to talk you out of it. And they want to make them feel their egos are big, I tell you. I told to the doctors, you will see that what God is going to do in, in our lives. Hallelujah. Time after time after time, God has proved it. And they are scratching their head because I said, what I preach on the pulpit, that's what I will preach. You are doctors, you speak the medical language. I am a pastor. I will preach faith all the days of my life. What else? I'm a liar. I will quit preaching. I'll quit doing the work of the Lord because I believe what God has said is true and I will stay faithful to this all the days of my life. No matter what comes my way because he will bring me through the fire, through the water. He will shut the mouth of the lion for me for I am resting in him. He is my portion. Shall we all stand to our feet? There is a rest for the people of God. There is an inheritance God has for you. You can have it. God is faithful. If anybody needs prayer, you can come forward. I would like to pray for you. Lord, I pray this word is ministering to every heart. Open their hearts to believe that every stronghold is break, broken. Every stubborn situation in the name of Jesus is dismantled and disintegrated. Hallelujah. Jesus is all that we need this morning time. There is an anointing of rest in his rest. Rest in his rest. Hallelujah. Anybody needs prayer, you can come forward. We'll pray for you.